you, Catherine. That was so nice. I feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Several years ago, the consultants went to the airline industry and said, we know how you can fix your financial woes. All you have to do is one very simple thing, charge for bags. Passengers have to fly with them anyway. You might as well charge a fee, instant income. To which most of the airlines said, absolutely, let's do it. You guys enjoy paying those bag fees? <laughs> Who knew you were gonna have to buy a pair of scales to weigh your bag before you traveled? Well, consultants also went to Southwest Airlines and said, we know how you can add $350 million in revenue. Now, I don't care what size company you are, $350 million should get your attention. But Southwest Airlines, since its inception in the 70s, has had a very well thought out and determined purpose, which is to democratize the skies, to make it easier for people to fly, to get from point A to point B. So when the consultants came to Southwest Airlines, they said no. It didn't align with what they believed in. It was not in alignment with the way that they thought, the way they operated the company, the way they trained their employees. Everything was based on their purpose. And this added burden of a check bag fee did not fit with what the company stood for. So instead, they did something kind of unique and interesting. They turned to their advertising agency, GSD&M, in Austin, and they said, let's run some TV spots showing our baggage handlers. You guys might have seen them. The big old burly guys on the tarmac with their hankies crying and waving goodbye to your bags and hugging each other and saying, we sure did love those bags. The response was phenomenal. In 12 months, Southwest Airlines added almost a billion dollars in revenue. Simply because they decided to care for bags instead of charge for them. A decision made in alignment with their purpose that paid off in a huge way. So I'd like each of you to think about how most companies make business decisions. How are they made? It's one of two things that motivates them. On one hand, how could they save the company money? And on the other hand, how could they make the company money? In other words, how would their decision add to the bottom line in a positive way? Now most business leaders and companies will tell you that they already have a very solid, well-stated, well-thought-out mission, vision, and values. And many do. But my question is, are those phrases and expressions used when making business decisions? And unfortunately, I think too many of them end up in binders on a shelf gathering dust are hidden in computer archives, or possibly just dropped into a company's website. <coughs> so my question is, why are these phrases written in the first place if they're not there to guide the business and to help them make their day-to-day -day decisions? To help you think about that, I'd like to share with you a typical mission statement. I didn't make this up, this one's real. Our mission is to create consistent value for our customers and supply chain partners that will maximize shareholder value and long-term earnings growth. We will do this by managing our business with integrity and the highest ethical standards while acting in a socially responsible manner with particular emphasis on the well-being of our teammates and the communities we serve. Inspired? Ready to run out there and go do that? What Whatever all that means, how do you decipher that? How do you actually call that up daily and say, let's make a decision based on this? Well, it might have something to do with how these phrases are created in the first place. 
So I came across, I don't know if you guys know the Marketunis, but I came across this wonderful cartoon that shows how most mission statements are put together. <laughs> mission statement, guided by a heartfelt adjective, relentless, focus on cliche quality, another cliche quality, no, we already used quality. We will strive to, long-winded phrase, deliver aspirational word to our value group. So if all mission and vision and values start to look and sound the same and become interchangeable, how do they differentiate a company? How do they show what you stand for? What is it that gives you some unique value? How many times do you hear anybody run into the office and say this? How can I create consistent value for our customers and supply chain partners that will maximize shareholder value and long-term earnings growth today? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to do that for us. Sign me up. These phrases do not engage people at a belief level, and they don't give them something very solid to stand on. So I'm going to play this out a little bit for you and talk about what's missing. Because most executives will tell you that they're very proud of their mission, vision, and values, but they wonder why people don't understand them or feel an attachment to them. Well, I believe that there are two critical bookends that are missing from these three statements. Bookends that will help to support your mission, help you reach your vision, and live your values. Those are the bookends of purpose that Catherine mentioned earlier and behaviors on the other end. Now your purpose has to do with what you stand for, what you believe in. It's your why. It is what you want people to understand about your company and the gift that you want to share with the world. Not what you want to get, but what you want to give. And purpose builds trust and purpose helps build meaningful relationships. On the other end of this equation are behaviors. Behaviors help people know how to act, how they can come together and collectively bring your purpose to life. And if you do not have these anchors on either side of your mission, vision, and values, they fail to inspire and they fail to give people a roadmap for how they're supposed to get there. Making sense? Hopefully. Everybody's still awake? This is good. At least you're not hot now, right? You're feeling a little bit of a, a cooler breeze coming along. <clears throat> so let me describe these terms to you, because you've heard me say purpose, mission, vision, values, and behaviors, and you go, yeah, they're all the same. People think they're interchangeable. Here's a nice little uh, short definition of each to show you how I'm using them here. Purpose is the reason anyone would want to associate with your company. Why would they care to associate with you? Work for you? Buy from you? Have you in their neighborhood? Provide services to you? What would compel them to want to associate with you? Your mission is how you differentiate through the way you deliver on your purpose. You see, purpose is broad. It can be fairly universal. Anybody know the purpose of MD Anderson Hospital? Make cancer history, cure cancer. Are they the only people that want to do that? No, there's a lot of places that are working on making cancer history, curing cancer, killing cancer. So purpose is very broad and universal. When you differentiate is in the way you deliver on it through your mission, what you are doing day in and day out to make that real. Your vision is this vivid picture of where you are headed to motivate other people to want to take the journey with you. Why would they care? Where have you touched them that they said, yes, I see that future. I see where you're going. I want to go there with you. Engagement. Engagement, absolutely. Then your values are these unwavering principles that are necessary to infiltrate your culture with purpose. What do you stand for that is not negotiable. Now we get to 
the behaviors, and this is who you demonstrate yourselves to be through your actions. Everything you did up until this point, purpose, mission, vision, values, are great, but they mean absolutely nothing if they do not come through in your behaviors, if they are not connected to everything you say and do. It's a demonstration of who you are. So what does it look like when somebody gets this right? What does it look like when a company actually pulls this equation together? I'm going to share with you two examples very quickly in totally different industries. And I'm going to tell you what the purpose of each one of these companies is. And then I'm going to share a couple of their values that are tied to behaviors. So you can see how the behavioral piece fits in on the other end. The first one is TBG Partners. They're landscape architects. And for them, it's not about benches. It's not about trees and fountains and sidewalks. It's about making Earth a more memorable place. This is the gift that they want to give to the world. They want to create places where memories are made, where people come and interact or are in solitude. So every decision that they make on a day-to-day -day basis is, how is that going to help make Earth a more memorable place? One of their values is be authentic. And a behavior attached to that, there are several behaviors, one of them is tell our stories. One of the ways in which we are authentic is for you to go out and share with the world what we stand for. Learn our stories, create our stories, and tell our stories. Another value is be inquisitive. And a behavior attached to that value is stay hungry. Don't believe that you've finally gotten all the answers, that you've learned enough, that you're done. Quest, be hungry, care, seek, and grow. The second company I want to share with you is Diamond Offshore. <clears throat> Drilling contractor. And you may think that's a tough business in which to have a purpose. But Diamond's purpose is to responsibly unlock energy. It's not about being the number one provider of something. It's not about being the most sought after. It's about responsibly unlocking energy. One of their values is take ownership. And a behavior attached to that is run to the problem. Don't throw up your hands and say, it wasn't my job, not in my job description. I didn't do it, wasn't me. Somebody over there must have dropped the ball. When there is a problem or a challenge, run to it and be part of the solution. A second value of diamonds is exercise care. To respect that every action has consequences. Everything you do has a consequence. This is so much stronger than saying safety. So many companies have safety as a value. Well, how do I be safe D? How do I actually do that? What is it that you're asking me to do? Okay, I'll just sit in my chair with a helmet on. That'll be good. So this tells you that everything that you do, other people are affected, that there are consequences. Making sense? Yes? Good? Well, what do you think the number one reason is that employees stay with a company? Yes? For the other people that work there. That's a great answer. Collaboration. Collaboration. Leadership. I'm sorry? Aligned purposes. Aligned purposes, collaboration. You guys are good. Leadership. 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 Um, like yes, you do. I think I can sit down now. You guys have got it. <laughs> <laughs> because usually I hear this salary, bonuses pay increases, title, career path, leadership, power. That's, why, that's how the majority of people look at why someone stays with a company. Because if you realize that only 30% of employees are fully engaged at any given time, according to polls, that means 70% of the people in the company are looking for something better, looking for another way out. According to Gallup, the number one reason that people stay with a company is because they have a desire to contribute to something they believe in, that they want to make a difference. 
People want to leave at the end of the day of working feeling that what they have done has made a difference, that their job has meaning and value. Nobody wants to walk away saying, oh gosh, I've got to come back and do this again tomorrow. It's one of the reasons why Fridays are so popular and Mondays are so disliked. People just work to get to that weekend, and then you get to the weekend and you do 500 things and you're exhausted by Monday. It's a vicious cycle. So this is the way that Gallup actually said it. As employees move beyond the basics of employee engagement and view their contributions to the organization more broadly, they are more likely to stay, take proactive steps to create a safe environment, have higher productivity, and connect with customers to the benefit of the organization. Who doesn't want that? I think that's very powerful. So there was a lady who flew Southwest Airlines time after time, and every time she flew, she wrote a letter of complaint. She became affectionately known as Pen Pal. They just kept getting these letters. I don't like the way you load the planes. I don't like that there's no first class. I don't like it that you don't have any meals. I hate peanuts. And by the way, I don't like those uniforms. And why do they make those announcements the way they do? This is serious business, and they're singing an announcement on the airplane. Customer relations kept at answering her back. On her final letter, customer relations had had it, and so they bumped it up to then CEO Herb Keller and said, boss, this one's for you. To which Mr. Keller, in 60 seconds, wrote her back an answer. Dear Miss Crabapple, we will miss you. He didn't have to consult the committee. He didn't have to think about it. He didn't have to write her a four-page letter on what they stood for. He realized that she was not their customer. Four words, we will miss you. So let me ask you. Could you pass up a chance to make $350 million of revenue in one year in order to stand for what you believe in with the hopes of making three times that much? And would you be willing to fire a customer because they didn't align with what your business stands for so that you could pay attention to those who do? And what is it that you are using on a day-to-day -day basis today to guide your business decisions? To help you with this, we're going to give you each a handout. And you can take this back to your office with you. And here's the instructions for the handout. Make copies for everyone on your leadership team, executive team, your group, your entire company, depending on your size and who you want to do this with. It's called five questions in five minutes. And it goes like this. Each person is handed a piece of paper. No names need to be written on the paper. They're anonymous. You give everyone five minutes to individually answer these five questions. What is the one guiding principle that influences all your company's innovations, investments, and decisions? Question two. In one sentence, can you describe the main purpose of your company? Question three, in what ways does your company behave differently from anyone else in your field? Number four, what percentage of your employees do you believe know what your organization stands for? And what percentage of your clients? And the final question, use only the parts that apply, how would you place the following stakeholders in order of importance to your company? Now, once you have those answers, gather them back up. And as you do your analysis, if you find that everybody in your group answered these questions identically, bravo. You are fabulous. You are on fire. In fact, I would bet you that you are highly successful. But if you find 
that you had many answers that had to do with growth, profit, shareholder value, and finances. Or if you find that you have answers that are all over the place, they may be good answers, but they're not necessarily connected and they don't look like you're talking about the same entity, then I would contend that this is a great time for you to do the work of uncovering your company's true north. And this would be a great time for you to figure out how to get your head out of your bottom line and build your brand on purpose. Thank you guys very much.